Hi YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark. Here we are out at the beautiful Willamette River and I am interviewing Louisa Hamachek and she has another announcement that she'd like to make. Yeah. And so, it's all yours, Lou. Alright, hi. Um, Hanford is in the Tri-Cities area of Washington State, just above Pasco, where the Snake River comes in from Idaho. So if you're looking at a, a, a map of the United States, you'll find the Columbia River coming down from Canada. Where the Snake River hits it is where Hanford is. It's in the center of the Columbia Basin, which is a low, flat area that was um, flattened out by the, Colum the Missoula floods years ago that carved out the Columbia Gorge. And, um, and uh, it will hold in the radioactive dust of a Fukushima-like explosion at the nuclear power plant which is operating which makes four percent of the electricity for the northwest in the center there at Hanford. They call it the Columbia Generating Station but it is the nuke at Hanford and don't let them confuse people. You can ask people to have the nuke at Hanford shut before a Fukushima-like event happens. It is old. They're applying again and again for their 40-year relicensing. It's over. It's like 40 years old. It was part of the bomb making. It's the only remaining operating reactor at Hanford. Hanford and there's actually a new earthquake fault that they've discovered that's active up there. I want to talk there. about that now. And so Physicians for Social Responsibility was contacted by this engineer from uh, the Tri-Cities area who reviewed the engineering geologic report about earthquakes and the safety and the structural uh, integrity of the Columbia Generating Station, what used to be called WHOOPS, Washington uh, Utilities Power System or something, WHOOPS. Anyways, good name to change. And um, so uh, they are, um, let's see, hmm, what was I saying? I don't know. Um, they've oh yeah, Physicians for Social Responsibility has exposed about three months ago this incredibly um, powerful report by this engineer geologist that discloses that the government, Department of Energy, submitted this uh, request to have automatic 40-year relicensing permit given to that nuclear power plant saying it was safe for the public around there. This is a highly populated area. It's not a uh, place that's way far away. The Tri-Cities of Hanford uh, are, are a lot. 250,000 people are in Spokane directly within about an hour's wind oh my God. of Hanford. The Columbia Basin is flat. The wind will blow across until it hits the mountains. Predominantly, it will try to go across. And you all probably all know how the meltdown meltdowns happened at Fukushima. Well, the Henford reactor is the same form of reactor, the same company and everything. They've got the um, used fuel rods are stored within the containment building above the reactor inside of it. When mm -hmm. the meltdowns happen, it's because of, it, it happened because of an earthquake. This, uh, the re this report said that within about four miles of Hanford is a major Umptonum Ridge a fault line that is big and it's going from Yakima and Union Gap right towards Hanford, uh, right towards this operating nuclear power plant and the um, and uh, it was not included which is clear that they have lied to all the residents around there and it is unsafe. The residents around Hanford within five miles, within one mile, within ten miles and then within 50 to 100 miles, they are all in danger inside of this basin. Oh, baby boop, baby it's boop okay. Stuff, depending on which way the wind blows, I've been watching on Northwest Cable News the uh, weather that they show a satellite. I've been watching the winds blow, and they come from either direction. If there's a big storm off the Oregon coast, it uh, starts a big spiraling storm who uh, in the northern hemisphere um, spirals, the storm spiral counterclockwise. If and then it has its, its, its spikes that come right around and pick up from Hanford would go up the Snoqualmie Pass to Seattle. If it goes in its normal way, it usually blows so strong you can't stand there peacefully. And the workers, at the guards at Hanford have confirmed this with me, directly towards, uh, to the northeast, towards wow. Spokane. And uh, to the east, it hits um, Walla Walla, first Pasco, Walla Walla. Um, then Moscow, Idaho, and then directly across wow. there. And then it hits the Bitterroot Mountains. It 
doesn't go north because north gets tighter. It goes south after some disperses over the central or Idaho Bitterroot Mountains. Yeah, they're just dips down. I've made a clay model and blown smoke and seen what happens. Stop, Boop. The other goes, okay. um, goes to okay. Boise. Betty Boop. Hello. <sighs> we have to show you because she's yeah, whining. Cause she she wants to be whining. on the yeah. video. There you are. Yeah, now she's happy. Please don't nuke my dog. Please ask please your don't. congressman. <laughs> To, uh, so we need to close down the Columbia Generating Station, yes, which really has to do with Patty Murray, you know, Ron Wyden, uh, what's her name? Oh my God, I'm sorry, I totally Stop forgot it. her name. Um, in, in, But you know what I found out is that Patty Murray is the reason that the Columbia Generating Station is still open. She right. likes the billions of dollars that comes into her state from it. Right. And, and so she pushes for it every year. She's the one pushing for the renewal. Yeah. And I've been to these uh, public hearings at Hanford and the local people there are trying to develop radioactive jobs of businesses, like making radioactive isotopes that would be inserted into cancer tumors. And they're trying to do good things with radioactive materials. But it's scary because they'll do anything to keep work going on there. And they do get $2 billion a year to the town of Richland. Wow. Of federal money to clean up Hanford, not to develop more businesses, not to keep the nuclear power plant operating. And I've had many people tell me it's because it's all part of war. Helen Caldicott, Dr. Helen Caldicott said the reason they're keeping the Columbia Generating Station going because it all fits into keeping a uh, nuclear processing going on because they want to make more nuclear missiles now. And that was where the nuclear missiles were made. And they want to keep this going on. They could reopen it depending on the um, president, depending on Congress and stuff like that, that they're, they need to keep a toe inside the door and keep it operating. It now makes 4%. Two years ago, three years ago, right before Fukushima happened, it made 7% of the electricity. That is sold to Bonneville Power Administration. Bonneville Power Administration sells it to our company, eWeb, and to all these other electric utilities, public utilities, um, cooperatives, electric cooperatives. So the other thing to do, besides going to your congressman and demanding that that nuke be shut off now, now, not as soon as possible. I used to say as soon as possible, and I realized that's ridiculous because we are expecting the huge northwest earthquake. Right. It needs to be shut ago. down immediately. A hundred years ago it was right. due, so it's overdue by a hundred years, and it will be a 9.2. It will destroy half the structures between Arcata, California and Bellingham, everything made of bricks and cinder blocks, up to the Cascades. Then they are not sure how far through, but it's only a 20 minute to half hour drive past the Cascades before you hit um, the Tri-Cities. So they're just beyond the Cascades is where it is. So in my opinion, we can't be sure. Besides that, every bit of safety equipment Every helicopter, every everything will be taking care of all the disaster of Seattle and Port Portland won't be affected as much as Seattle, but Seattle will be ruined when that thing happens. And so the whole West Coast is going to be, from Arcata to Canada, will be... Well, if they don't stop the leaking tanks in Hanford, Seattle, the water supply from Hanford, you know, those 40 miles of trenches, They, I went to something that the Hanford Challenge gave last summer. They basically know that within 10 years, if they don't figure out a solution, you know, those 40 miles of unlined trenches that Bechtel did, mm -hmm. the water supply to Seattle is in danger in less than 10 years. I don't think so. That's what they said. Uh, because it's seeping down. They said it's only 100, it's 100 feet from the groundwater that feeds they Seattle. They get water from different sources in Seattle. Oh, good. Yeah, because there's the basin, and it goes up to the Cascades and down into Seattle. And the um, Columbia goes down, and it hits... Portland, and then it goes up and back over west to the sea. Um, but Portland is downriver of Hanford. Please, boop, stop. And um, Seattle is a different way. Seattle is, from what I have now seen, which they try to discourage us from thinking this, that the winds will blow backwards towards the ocean. But I've seen from the maps and the, the weather reports that it does. Um, as soon as there's a big old storm, off the Oregon coast, these winds whip back up through past Hanford and back to Seattle. Um, and, wow. And go up through Snoqualmie Pass. So is there a time frame when they're going to be getting their licensing back? Oh. And, and um, the other thing, which you probably said on your uh, reports quite a bit, is that it took six days for the Fukushima mess. Right. Please stop. I'm going to pick you up. 
you're going to stay here by me. You're not going to the river. Okay. <laughs> okay. And so, um, it took six days for uh, Oregon to be dosed with the Fukushima dust right. that was blown from the exploded apart cement of the um, containment structure that we have at the same thing at, at, at Hanford. And, um, and then 26 days was it to get all the way around the northern hemisphere right. back to Fukushima. Right. And um, Dr. Helen Caldicott giving her report uh, two years ago, her speech at Hanford rally that the Portland Occupy group organized, which was awesome. Um, she said if uh, Hanford goes, if Fukushima blows again, or if Hanford goes, either one of them, she is definitely grabbing all of her family and moving to the Southern Hemisphere. She's moved to the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. Well, she is from Australia. Right. So she she's she gone. Now. Yes, she's okay, gone. Okay. Well, <laughs> yes. um, that was that like happened. So two years ago, she said that she would grab them all. Well, and Fukushima move to did blow up. Number three at Christmas had a big fire, and it's been completely out of control. And that was the one. Um, in fact, that's why a lot of people now are feeling the flu. We're getting low-level radiation sickness because. It came across over the first of the year, and people are feeling the effects. That's why people feel exhausted and tired, and the flu's happening. We're seeing the avian flu killing people and getting people sick. Yeah. I mean, the bald eagle's dying. I mean, it's... Well, I don't want to have people live in a sense of sickness, because this solar right. energy is awesome, and the outside is wonderful, and we don't live in a horrible world. We live in a beautiful place, and it shouldn't be ruined because we are too afraid to tell our Congress what to do. Right. We and have to have the it thing is, immediately. we live in a nuclear reality. The, the, the world changed after Fukushima blew up. Mm -hmm. We are now in the age of fission because they've allowed it to go into fission. So there are things we can do, and there are places you can go to figure out how to keep yourself healthy. We, and you know, you're committed to your health, commit to eating right, commit to exercise, commit to being happy, being happy is one of the number one reasons why people can survive. So. Well, I think you can be happy if you join up with other people to stop the bullshit. And hey, I, I'm going to end. This friends. guy's like little motor thing is driving me crazy. So. Okay. Okay. Ciao. Ciao.